Hello and welcome to this first video where we're going to take a look at the audio warp function in Cubase. So most of this applies only to Cubase Pro. This may not be in Artist and it's certainly not in Elements and lower versions, but it's a little difficult to tell from the Steinberg feature comparison chart. So I'm going to show you it anyway and hopefully you'll have it, but if you don't, if you don't see the controls that I'm seeing, then you know why. So here's the setup. Something straightforward as ever, so you can see what's going on. So we've got two tracks here. The first one is a drum loop. And the second one is just a simple guitar part, which is played along in time with this pretty much. But there's a few little bits where the groove just isn't quite right. So... So you can hear it slips a little bit out of time here and there. Most of it's okay. It's the kind of thing that you'd probably have accepted back in the day. I was listening to some music yesterday from the 80s. It was Killing Joke and realised just how out of time a lot of stuff used to be. And you used to think Killing Joke were incredibly tight. But there we go. So first things first, back in the day, what we would have done, let's say we'll take bar three because there's the probably the biggest timing thing early on. And you can see the guitars a little bit early. So what you would have had to do back in the day, and you may still have to do if you don't have this function, is cut either side of it. Then move your audio to where it should be. So just turn snap off and move that to the right place. And then you'd probably use time stretch to fill the gap. So typically what I would have done previously is use the scissors to cut, let's say there, and then slip into time warp mode. So you can press one repeatedly or you can hold down on here and go sizing applies time stretch. Turn snap on but put it to events. And then you can just time stretch this to fit. So this little bit of gap has been time stretched to fit there. I'd do the same here. And again, time stretch that. So that fits that gap and so on. And while that's totally possible and that will sound fine, it's, it's a bit long winded and it used to take a long time to do that, but you don't have to do that anymore. So I'm going to stick that all back together going back to the normal mode and then open this up in the editor. So I'm going to stay in the bottom half of here rather than open it up in a separate window just for a bit of clarity. And it's the audio warp section we're going to take a look at today. So this means you can just literally just grab audio and move it around. Now there is a caveat to that is that it will just stretch between by default the beginning and end of the event. So if I grab hold of bar three and move it, you can see the audio before is being stretched out and the audio after is being compressed. And we can just undo that easily enough. So if you've got parts you are feel are in time, so for instance, let's go to bar four and look at that. I think that's pretty in time, so I'm going to hold that in place. The way to do it is just click with the warp marker, leave that there. So I've clicked on free warp, then I've just clicked here. So that's fixed bar four in place. And then let's go and have a look at bar two. It's a little bit before, but I'm happy with that. So I'm going to fix that. And then the bar three is maybe too far ahead. So we don't want it right there. So we're just going to move that a bit later. And then look at these. So beat four. Again, maybe a little early. Beat three now needs to move earlier. But you can see it's doing all the stretching, all of the effectively all the cutting and stretching that I was doing earlier on, it's doing it all automatically. So it's just applying time stretch to each segment. And now, so that's much more in time. So this part was particularly, you know, out of time. And you could do the rest of this. But you can see it's pretty quick and easy to fix that. You can do that fairly simply. But creating these other parts can be a little bit tedious. So what I'm going to show you is how you can just create those very quickly and then you can just move the bits that you need and add extra warp markers. So I'm just going to undo all the changes I made there. Now in the audio warp tab, if you click musical mode, uh, this is a strange thing, it seems to close on mine. It may not happen on yours, hopefully it won't. Um, once you've done musical mode, what it does is every... Uh, chosen time interval so at this point uh, it's quarters it's put in a warp marker so now you won't have to put in those preventative warp markers you can just grab the existing one so here for instance bar three beat two 
a little bit early there on the guitar so then we can go into free warp mode and grab these existing markers and move them to the right place so looking at bar bar two you can see that one's maybe a bit late so again i can drag that a bit late now if i wanted to add another one here i can still add an extra one in so i can just click here and create my own but using musical mode just puts in a grid of warp markers ready for you to do something with but you can see it's not actually changing the audio until you start moving these warp markers around so that can be a quick way if you've got a lot of edits to do that can be a quick way to get that fixed and sorted out uh, and it means that you're not going to move anything you don't want to which can happen with uh, some undesirable consequences so that's a look at how to use uh, the the first step of how to use audio warp so if you haven't used that before, I'd suggest you uh, record some audio badly, such as my bad guitar playing there, and then just practice putting it in time and you'll find it's incredibly useful for fixing takes that otherwise would be usable other than a, a bit of timing error here and there. So I hope you found that useful and I'll see you again soon.